Good afternoon and welcome back to another video with a guy and his projects. This is the uh, one of the never-ending projects we've uh, dived into and if you're interested in seeing a lot of things we've done to this Jeep and the identical blue one please hit subscribe hit the like button check out the playlist there's an entire playlist with a whole bunch of videos on WJ's um, ZJ's as well so check those out there's tons and tons of stuff we've done to these things lots of good stuff on there all right so today what we are doing is we're putting on a second steering stabilizer so we're replacing the existing one and adding a second so we're going to have dual steering stabilizers on this jeep grand cherokee i'm going to show you how i did that this is not a how to do it this is a how i did it kind of video i'm not a mechanic not specialized not certified in any way just the way i happen to install them so keep in mind, I will link products down below through Amazon Affiliates. If you click on my link and buy something within 24 hours without clicking on somebody else's link afterwards, I make a small commission. I highly appreciate that. Thank you so much. I also have a direct link from PayPal and Zelle if you want to donate directly to the channel. So let's get into it. So a little tiny bit of history on this Jeep, which is probably more than a tiny is I bought this Jeep with a four inch lift kit on it and bigger tires. Um, it had death wobble bad. The previous guy couldn't figure out how to get rid of death wobble. So I got it pretty cheap. I also couldn't figure out how to get rid of death wobble. Didn't matter what I did, what we adjusted, what we aligned. We could never get rid of death wobble. We'd get rid of it, it'd come back, get rid of it, it'd come back, get rid of it, it'd come back. So the final solution was to get rid of the lift kit, removed completely, got a video on that as well and we put it back to a stock suspension stock height um, i got stock springs stock shocks stock control arms stock everything went back to stock height and that pretty much cured death wobble completely we've put several thousand miles on it since we went back to stock with minimal issues that said we no longer get death wobble uh, but we get almost bump steer uh, we've had this aligned a couple times and I'm starting to wonder if maybe the frame is a little twisted at this point. Uh, I don't know, but essentially if you go over railroad tracks, your steering wheel goes boom for a little while afterwards and it's not great. It's not death wobble. Um, we're calling it bump steer because uh, it's mainly bumps uh, and it just goes out of control, but never out of control. Like So death wobble with the lift kit when we had death wobble. It would go out of control. You had to stop. You had to pull over and stop. You had to, you couldn't even hit the brakes. It made it worse. You had to just let it ride itself out so you got stopped and go again. So this isn't death wobble. It's just a wobble, but it's a controllable wobble. I don't like it. I want to get rid of it. The shops can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. So I've decided to band-aid it with a second steering stabilizer. <laughs> so that is what I did. I can tell you since we've done that, I'm going to show you how I went through it here in a minute. Since I've done that, it has been flawless. Uh, zero issue since. No bump steer, no death wobble, not even a wobble. It drives like a Cadillac. Well, not like Cadillac. Those. Well, actually, yeah, because this floats too. Anyway, it drives good now. It occurs to me as I look at the steering stabilizer that this might be the original one with 180,000 miles on it. When we removed it, I could, you know, move it in and out with my fingers. So there's very potentially the problem is right there, just needed an upgraded or a freshened up steering stabilizer. But I already bought two, so we're gonna put on both. Uh, this Jeep has 180 some thousand miles on it and uh, she's, she's worn out. So the first step is unnecessary. I'm gonna put this in the air because one, I have a lift, I'm gonna use it too. It makes it easier to get you guys in there with a camera and three just because it's going to make it more roomy so i'm going to put the jeep in the air um if you're doing this use some jack stands if you'd like uh please be safe that's all i'm trying to say all right so my steering stabilizers came pretty dinged up um it's not uncommon when i order shocks of any kind that the boxes come pretty damaged i've had missing hardware and a lot of boxes of shocks these are no exception i wasn't missing hardware i don't think we might get there. There might have been a second optional clamp that I'm missing. I don't know if they ship it with that or not. I hope they do. Either way, boxes were pretty damaged, but that is what it is. So, so with the hardware, 
I started this, so I went through and I replaced the bottom one, the stock one first. This is super easy, guys. You don't need a video on it. You just rip the nut out, both nuts, then, or sorry, you rip the nut out, you rip the bolt out, you pull it out, you put the new one in. Super easy, nothing to it, okay? Uh, but what I ended up finding out is on the additional, this was a kit that I ordered, the additional shock or the additional steering stabilizer has a clamp that goes around the track bar. My track bar was too small or they shipped the wrong clamp. I don't know which happened, but the clamp was way too big for the original stock track bar on this Jeep. Now it just so happens that uh, one of the times we were trying to cure death wobble before I went back to stock suspension, I ordered a different track bar uh, from the one that was on there because the old one was adjustable but not very so i ordered this rough country one that has a lot more adjustment in it and i kept that when i sold the lift kit i kept the adjustable track bar uh the additional adjustable track bar and the clamp fits perfectly on that track bar so before i went ahead and did this whole modification of adding another steering dampener i had to replace my track bar you probably don't have to do that i they may have sent the wrong clamp there might be a smaller clamp that they were supposed to send might have been in the missing hardware from the box being all beat up. Maybe they just intend on you having a bigger track bar. I don't know. There is a spot to check on the website to say, hey, I have this track bar and I checked that. So I don't know. Either way, I put in the upgraded track bar, the bigger diameter, and that is what I am installing this with. No big deal. So like I said, already replaced the first one. That's easy. You remove the bolt holding it to the axle. And then you remove the bolt holding it to the tie rod. And then you pull out the shock, put the new shock in, and rebolt it. I don't know the torque specs, don't really care. I just tighten them till they were tight. And don't let your impact, if you're using impact, okay. So people use impacts wrong. I'm not going to go on that tangent. Don't just sit there. Just wait till it gets tight and stop. Your impact will freaking tighten it on there bad. And you don't want it super tight. It's got to move a little bit. So that was easy enough. Uh, I, I will say the, the bracket that holds the steering dampener to the axle uh, from the previous time it was tightened down, it might be a little too tight to get that fresh bushing in there. Just use a, some adjustable pliers and just try and peel that out or a screwdriver or a pry bar, something to separate it so you can get your new one in. You may run across that. That's pretty common. All right, so for the new dampener, it comes with a clamp, comes with a couple of clamps. So the instructions on the new, the addition, kind of sucked. Uh, they were black and white. They weren't really easy to see the pictures. So I kind of had to make this up as I go. Uh, it's not overly complicated, but I don't know if I did it right. But it comes with a clamp that you will have to spread apart in order to get over your uh, track bar or your, uh, your other, your tie rod, whichever way you're doing it. Uh, I had to grab a couple adjustable pliers and stretch that to get it around the bar. This is where I figured out I have to replace the track arm or the track bar because the clamp was way too big to tighten down on it. So because I have the aftermarket track bar that has the sleeve, the adjustment sleeve, um, I couldn't fit another clamp there. So I ended up doing this to what I think is backwards and I installed it the other way around. I don't know if this is right. I don't know if it's wrong. It's just the way I did it and it seems to be working. Uh, so I don't think it's an issue at all. But I put one clamp on the Pittman arm bar, uh, the, uh, the bar, I'm gonna call it the tie rod bar. It's the bar that attaches the Pittman arm, uh, tie rod and goes down. I put one clamp on that side up by the driver's side and then i put the other one on the tr so i put the other one on the track bar down by the spring perch and that seems to be the way i was able to get it to work and all the fit and jive uh, all good and to go the biggest problem with this whole thing was getting that clamp uh clamped back on because you had to stretch it a lot to get it over the bar um and then Squishing it back together was hard with access to get in there with my channel locks. I did manage, but it wasn't necessarily easy. But once you get those two clamps in place, really all that's left is figuring out your adjustment for the rod, the piston, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call it the rod and that dampener. 
So I tried to not overcomplicate this. The instructions tell you to turn your tires one way, measure, turn your tires the other way, measure. Uh, I tried to not complicate it too much and I just measured the amount of rod showing on the lower original uh, uh, shock and adjusted the clamp so the same amount of rod was showing on the upper one. I don't have any binding issues. I don't have any uh, restrictions. It seemed to work just fine. I never did the whole turn, turn, turn thing to measure. I just measured the bottom rod and made the top one match with it. After that, all I did is tighten the clamps down for the official the official time. Started the Jeep up. I turned the wheels both ways, not to measure, just to make sure I could. So everything works flawlessly with the uh, both dampeners. I have no more of that steering wheel wander or wobble. It tightened everything up. Now, keep in mind when I say it was wobbling and stuff, I think that was the original steering dampener, 180,000 some miles. Uh, it had been used and abused. Uh, it may have been replaced at some point, but I'm not convinced. So keep in mind, you may not have these issues. Um, if you do have death wobble, this is not necessarily a solution, more of a band-aid. If you have bump steer, same thing. This might not be a solution so much as a band-aid. Either way, I put the dual steering stabilizers on this 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee WJ, and it is working amazing. I don't regret it. It was worth the money, and I will link those down below. Uh, I don't think I got these on Amazon. I think I got them on a different website. I'll have to try and find that again, but uh, I'm happy with it, so no issues. Drives nice, runs good, and it's a Saturday. There's a lot of traffic. So I'm happy with it. It works great, worth the money. I will link it down below to whatever website I bought. I'll link something similar on Amazon, most likely. Check it out. Thanks again, guys, for staying tuned. Check out the playlists. Check out all the other videos I've got. Stay tuned. I'll keep posting. We're doing a bi-weekly post now, mainly because uh, I'm running low on the YouTube funds to uh, fund these projects. And, uh, you know, if I don't got money, I can't do projects. So <laughs> stay tuned. They'll keep coming if you keep watching. We'll see you later, guys. Adios.